hey, if you are in the market for a new car or a used car, and you're not sure whether you should buy it, should you lease it, well, this episode is just for you because today, Roberto Martinez from DNM Leasing is going to talk about the pros and cons of buying a car versus leasing a car. Should you lease? Should you buy? All that and more in today in today's episode. So before we dive in, I do want to remind our viewers and our listeners on Apple Podcasts or on YouTube, wherever you may be, to subscribe to this channel because if you are in the process of repairing your credit or want to learn a lot about credit. Um, in this channel, in my, in my episodes, I take a deeper dive on everything that's going on behind the scenes in the credit realm, whether, you know, what the credit bureaus are up to, what alternative data bureaus are up to, what uh, new credit score models are on the horizon, what law changes are coming up, all that is, is and more is what I dive into my channel. So if you're looking to repair your credit or just want to learn a lot about credit in general, maybe you're looking to buy a house in the future, maybe get a better rate. On, uh, on an auto loan or a vehicle, uh, or just get approved for loans and, and credit cards in general, then uh, then you're at the right place at the right time. So subscribe to our, my channel so you can get the latest and greatest information that comes out so you do not miss a beat. Okay, so Humberto, thanks for, for dropping by, man. Really glad to, to have you. Having you. And a little backstory for, for you guys, you know, Humberto actually helped me and my wife, you know, here recently. And uh, you, if you can tell, if you can remember, you know, and you actually didn't get a lot of the, the 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 background that me and my wife went through. I know I think the Kia dealership and uh, the Cadillac dealership got a lot of that. Where we were we're very picky individuals, very picky buyers, very selective. I mean, we were probably in the market for about a year. Um, me and my wife both have two cars. We had two cars, and you know we obviously have two kids. You know, a four year old and an eight month year old, and the space is a thing for us, right? So in in you know, with the Kia Telluride that came out from the, the Super Bowl commercial, I mean, that's like you know, one of the hottest vehicles right now. Um, but they're, you know, they're not they're not producing a lot, and uh, the price is kind of, kind of crazy. A very competitive market, and so we just kind of been very picky, very selective. And uh, I, I would say we're probably a very difficult sell. Uh, I feel bad for the guys at Kia and the guys at Cadillac. We're a very difficult sell. But Alberto comes into the picture, and within like seven days, you know, the deal, the deal's done. The deal is finalized. The experience was 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 amazing. The numbers made a lot of sense to me. I'm a numbers guy, so the numbers made a lot of sense to me. The vehicle that he found for us was perfect for for our family. My wife loved it. Um, and ultimately, it was just the, the best of both worlds financially, and then of course the, the vehicle suited our needs. And so, um, also, we didn't have to go to to any dealership. That was my thing. We always had to kind of schedule appointments. You know, for kids. Uh, you know, hey, we could go to the dealership. We could look at a vehicle. It's just a lot of a lot of coordinating, and which also kind of delayed the process of us finding a vehicle. But they actually came to us. You know, they actually. Um, uh, the dealership came to us, brought the vehicle to us. Humberto actually showed up at, that, at our house as well, which which was uh, I didn't expect that. Just like uh, I thought, it was just like a guy in a call center kind of kind of thing. And, but yeah, she shows up, shakes the hand, and we meet him. I like, really I didn't expect it to be here, so it was a great experience overall. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that here in a bit. So Humberto, again, thanks for for dropping by. Thanks for coming in. My first question to you: uh, new car or 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 used car? New or used? Should you buy or should you lease? Kind of give us a little, little your input, your valuable wisdom on buying and leasing, whether it be a new car or a used car. Well, it depends. Uh, new cars, as we all know, as soon as you drive off the lot, it depreciates in value, right? So new cars, I would always suggest, instead of buying a depreciating asset and it losing 10% of its value within the first hour that you drive off the lot, you should probably lean more towards leasing a new car, okay? Used car, they're completely different. I would probably suggest buying a used car, uh, but depending on how long you want to own the car for, uh, same, same thing goes with the new car, right? Depending on how long you want to own the new car for, um, uh, I would suggest either leasing or financing. Yeah. But just as a general rule of thumb, lease new, buy used, but every, every person's situation is different. Yeah, you know, and for us, we. I think that's a question that's still difficult for us to answer, which is how long do you want to have this vehicle? I think, and I think me and my wife kind of differ a little bit. I mean, she's thinking like, hey, you know, as long as you possibly can. I'm thinking like, yeah, I'd like that too, but you know, there's always new vehicles coming out. So, you know, what if three, four years we want something different? You know, there's always new technology, there's always new styles coming out. Um, and so we always wanted that, that, that freedom. But do you find it that sometimes some people, 
um, maybe have a, that's a big difficult question for them to, to answer, which is like, how long do you, you know, plan to have the vehicle? Um, you know, you find maybe more, more short, short term thinkers or midterm kind of thing versus long term. Well, definitely. Uh, the what if question is always there. You know, what if we move, if, uh, our job takes us to, you know, the other side of the city? What if we have more kids? What if something happens? That's always a question. A lot of people would like to pay the cars off and have no payments and yeah. be debt free. But the reality is that that's not always the case. Right. Something always happens. Yeah. You know, three years, four years may not seem like a whole lot on paper, but you know, I'm, a lot of things are different in my life than yeah. they were three years ago. So you said that if it's, if it's a new car, uh, it'd be good to probably lease it. Right. Well, it depends. You know, if you if your history mm -hmm. is that of somebody who keeps their cars for 10 plus years okay. until the wheels fall off, and you've done that for your last, you know, three, four, five cars, mm -hmm. you're probably not leasing cabin. Okay. Right. You yeah. Know, you can if you're pretty handy, you fix your own cars, you know, but if you're a person who switches cars every three, four, five, or even six years, and then you can see in the future that something that, that you probably not going to want to keep this car forever. And it'd be a good idea to look at a leasing program of some kind. That that's a great story, great question, great great way to put it down. Because I think that I know I know for my listeners, especially you know maybe an individual that their that their credit score is okay, maybe you know maybe not the greatest, maybe five fifty, six fifty, some of that range. They don't know about leasing, and you know typically their interest rate on a purchase loan is is usually double digit. And and they are one of those people that you know you don't they don't keep cars for a long period of time. They, they're a three to five year, you know, maybe two to four, two to five year kind of kind of individual. Um, but they don't know about leasing, so they're always purchasing. And so I think for a lot of them, they're rolling over negative equity on top of high interest, so on and so forth. Um, would you say that kind of is creating bigger problems? That's exactly exactly what happens. Yeah, I mean. Nine times out of 10, that's exactly what happens. People finance cars for too long just to get a payment they're comfortable with, but because they yeah. finance it for so long, the interest rate goes up, right? right? And they have no intention of keeping it for the full, you know, six years, or seven years that they signed up for. You know, but they don't think about that when they're buying a car. They just think about, I want this car in particular, and I wanna pay X amount. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get me there, and I'll figure the rest yeah. later. And that's how you get into trouble. Mm. And so, if it's a used car, let's say it's uh, you know a used vehicle, and this person, let's say you're you're a consumer who uh, holds on to vehicles for a long period of time, and you're you're handy, you know how to fix up cars. Uh, you know, I guess a purchase kind of would work in a new scenario. Would it also work in a used vehicle scenario as well? It's yeah, kind of like a long term. Yeah, of course. You know, as long as you know what you're going in, what you're getting into, yeah. eyes wide open. That it's it's out of warranty. It's gonna have issues, but you know, if you if you can handle it, if you can, if you're pretty handy, yeah. uh, you know, finance the car for as long as you want. Right. So we'll get you the absolute lowest payment. The interest rate's gonna be sky high, but that doesn't matter because you're gonna pay it off and keep it yeah. until it just doesn't run anymore. So, so question number one is, what type of car person are you? Like, do you hold on to them long? Uh, long term, or you kind of you know, short term? First, that'd be good good mm -hmm. spot to figure out before you go into the car market. What type of uh, car person are you? Um, and what's unique? I remember in in, in our first conversation when, when we first uh, connected. I remember that was one of your questions, like you know, do you want to hold on to it for a long time, short time? What 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 are your what are your you know what's your buying pattern? What's your what's your turnover rate kind of thing? That's a great question. Um, how does the leasing process work? Like what a what are you looking for? Um, you know, what, uh, what 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 does a consumer need to know in terms of like leasing? Because I'm sure a lot of them think like, well, you know, if I'm leasing, um, is the vehicle mine? Who is the vehicle? Who's it belong to? Who's responsible for maintenance? All that stuff. Talk a little bit about the, the leasing process. How, how does that work? Well, I mean, leasing just in general is 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 pretty simple, right? Uh, you pay a certain amount for the first few years, however long you lease the car for. Yeah. Right. At the end of the term, you can either uh, decide if you want to keep it, continue making payments, uh, just turn it in and walk away, or trade it in and get something else. Okay. Um, the other question, what was a part two to your question? Well, it, it typically, like you know, when you when you're when you're buying, it depends on the vehicle, it depends on the dealership. You know, there's a 
it's you know who's responsible for like the maintenance or the upkeep or something goes wrong with that's it. right uh, i think it's kind of different right yeah. versus at least versus a, a purchase well that's a common misconception as well mm. a lot of people think you know i'm leasing it i'm not owning the car when you finance it, you're not owning it either, mm. right? You start making payments on it, and you'll find out who really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so you're leasing it. Yeah, you're not owning it either uh, as well, right? But you're only paying a portion of mm. the whole amount, right? Instead of being responsible or being liable for 100% of the car's value. Mm. Um, and then maintenance, it just depends. Some manufacturers pay for maintenance for their cars for the first two, three years. Yeah. Some don't, but everybody offers a maintenance package, Okay. right? Uh, so regular scheduled maintenance is still the, the responsibility of, okay. of, the, of, the, of the buyer, Okay. right? But anything uh, in under warranty yeah, is gonna be covered. So I, I know that, you know, you had, you had educated me on, on different types of leases. I thought it was just one kind of lease, but you know, apparently there's, there's different types of, of leases, which, was, which is really cool to learn. Um, talk a little about, you know, what types of lease programs you, you have. So there's a bunch of ways to set up a lease. There's actually about a hundred different ways you can set up a lease. And we'd be here all day talking about <laughs> it if, if we would, would have it. Yeah. Um, you know, the one that everybody knows is the manufacturer's lease. Mm -hmm. The ones that are being advertised everywhere, you know, 200 bucks a month, 300 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Like on a commercial. Yeah, yeah. Those leases. So that's a manufacturer's lease. That's a manufacturer's okay. lease. Yeah. I've got access to those programs too. Uh, they're not for everybody. Okay, uh, I think you were in a manufacturer's lease mm -hmm. right? so. when, when you called me. Yeah. Uh, and you were, if I remember correctly, six months, you had six months to go. Mm -hmm. about, well, about nine months. Nine months to yeah. go in the lease. Uh, and you were still pretty, uh, when we did the math, you were pretty far upside down. Yeah. Right. And you wanted to go into a different make, right. a vehicle. And then if you left the brand that you were with, you had to pay disposition, mileage, wear and tear. Right. Um, so it just really depends on the kind of person you are, um, and that's what we—that's what—that's what I do. You know, I kind of guide people. I get a little bit of information of what they're looking to do, and I recommend the lease that's going to work for them. Right? If if you tell me, hey, I want car X, and I'm going to stick with that brand till the day that I die, then you know we can probably look at a lease that's more focused around that brand. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah, just we had. Uh, the, you know, we were stuck with Cadillac, and one thing I didn't know—I didn't know that Cadillac uh, does depreciate quite a bit. I thought they held their value against it's Cadillac, but I thought wrong. It was my first Cadillac experience, and you know, I know that uh, you know you brought up a good point: is that because of all these fees, and and, and you know, if I were to move to a different you know make, um, you know, there's a lot of fees associated with it because of the type of lease that I'm in. Uh, which that wasn't really explained to me by you know by the dealership and uh, you know at, at the time and maybe uh, maybe it was it just was selective hearing, but uh, you know it seems like the way that they'll they'll hook you the way they'll keep you is like well you know just roll you right into this new vehicle and just kind of pick up the payments here and, but you're kind of stuck it's not until like you're thinking about switching makes that you know you notice okay there's all these other fees that I know about kind of are you know, stuck. You know, a lot of people don't know really that much about leasing in general. They just know you lease it for three years, four years, you know, and then you turn it in at the end. They think right. that that's that. That's that. Yeah. Um, I've been in the industry for 10 years and before I uh, joined DNM Leasing seven years ago, uh, I didn't uh, know that much about leasing either. I did a bunch of leases for customers. I didn't really know much about them other than, hey, just turn it in three years mm -hmm. and you'll be fine. Everybody was upside down, including myself. Wow. Yeah. You learn a lot more mm -hmm. with, through 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 D and M. So, um, what are the what are the kind of lease programs? Are there? So we know about the manufacturer lease. Manufacturer's lease. There are uh, third party bank leases. Yeah. We have our own lease that we can custom build from the ground up. Mm -hmm. It's called the Easy Lease. Cool. Um, and um, and then there's also residual based financing. There's just a bunch of different ways. And uh, the best way to make a recommendation mm -hmm. is to talk to. Uh, Some of the numbers yeah. in particular, yeah. and just kind of you know give me an idea of what you're looking to do, and I can go through the rolodex of leases in my mind and and, and find the the ones that are gonna suit you guys the yeah. best. Awesome. Um, so, you know, also one thing that 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 uh, that I did not know um, is you know just just you know the term uh, of the lease and all that, but uh, we're not. I say that for the time to go too long, 
you know, went into the conversation around that. But uh, well, I do want to talk about, you know, how how do you qualify for for a lease? You know, what are you what are you looking for uh, in, in an applicant? Uh, you know, so kind of scores you're looking for, other criteria. We'll get into that in just one second. But first, I do want to thank uh, our partners at Identity IQ. Uh, if you're currently monitoring your credit through Credit Karma, you're missing out big time. Identity IQ provides you with a full detailed consumer credit report from all three credit reporting agencies, not just two like Credit Karma does. Um, and you still get your Vantage score, so don't think that you're going to get a different scoring system or different credit scores. It's the exact same score that, that Credit Karma uses, which is called Vantage, Vantage 3.0. And Identity IQ is going to provide you with a million dollar identity theft protection policy, dark web and internet monitoring, and an enhanced three bureau credit report monthly, which is a great service. I use it for myself. Definitely need it, especially what's going on with the Equifax data breach. Everyone's information being compromised. I encourage you if you're out there monitoring your credit, Credit Karma is not going to solve all your problems. It's not going to give you Experian. You need to know what's going on with Experian as well. Um, so Identity IQ, it's a great tool. I use it for myself. And if you're going to start, you know, monitoring your credit, maybe repairing your credit, you need to know what's going on. You need to get all the details. You'll get more details with Identity IQ compared to what you would with Credit Karma. So for a limited time, my listeners get 35% off their secured max plan and even get a seven-day trial. Like they don't even give you a trial. If you go to Identity IQ website directly, there's no trial. They actually pay 30 bucks monthly for the secured max plan, but my listeners can get a seven-day trial. For just a dollar and get a discounted price actually get it at about 20 bucks per month actually 21 and some change with tax um and so to, to take advantage of this offer just go to www.all the number three scores.com that's a l l the number three scores.com to learn more and take advantage of the trial and the discounted price again go to all three scores.com to get started start monitoring your credit start protecting your credit Get that insurance policy in place, start knowing what's going on with your credit, and just be in the know what's going on with your credit report and your credit score. Again, all three scores.com to get a $1 7 day trial and 35% off the monthly price. All right, so back to, uh, to the question at hand How does one qualify for a lease? What, what are you looking for? You know, about the same as qualifying for a purchase, believe it or not. You know, obviously, they look at credit, um, uh, cash down. Um, content of the credits and the good thing is that our lenders don't look at a person as a score they look at the content of the credit right so we can have as you know a low score yeah. uh, with excellent pay history right or the opposite right a real a high score with only one credit card on there for 500 bucks right right so it's just about the same as so what, just like what the score spits out great <clears throat> just what you're gonna get no. Yeah. So it's a case by case basis. Okay. Got it. And let's take uh, you know a scenario. Let's say someone got a great credit score, but they had some bad history with auto you know, loans or transactions in the past. You know, is that considered? Don't yeah. That. Yeah. Everybody's considered um, because there's always a story there. Yeah. Right. There were some things that maybe were out of their control, and that's why their credit uh, looks the way it does. Yeah. Uh, but as long as we explain it to the banks and there's a, a, a solid story there, yeah, we can work it. Cool. Would you say that it could be a uh, little harder to qualify for at least compared to a purchase loan? I would say that in some cases, well, it just depends on, on, on the type of lease. Okay. 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 Yes. But um, to just kind of give you a straight answer on that, maybe. Okay. Right. A, yeah. a little harder to qualify for a lease than a purchase depending on the score. Right, but as long as there's a, a, a good story on right. why this credit looks that way, then it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, because I know that, like with with purchase loans, you know, there's there's actually banks that specialize, you know, in subprime, you know, poor credit, you know, uh, Westlake, Santander, um, just a couple, you know, Ford Motor Credit. Just a couple people come to mind that I mean, if you got, you know. 490 or 500 in, in a pulse um and the dealership offers it mm -hmm. you know they're, they're they they have them as, as, a, as a lender you're not leaving that dealership with, with without vehicle you're mm -hmm. going to probably pay 20 25 30 percent interest that's what they're there to do yeah um you know and and you know i, I kind of went through that process years and years ago when i first got into 
have my first vehicle, started to kind of get, you know, handle on credit. I didn't know better. I'm just looking at what's the payment. I'm not really looking at the rate, you know, too, too, you know, as much. But, you know, I, I get ready to go into a different vehicle and they're like, okay, you're upside down this much. So we have to roll it into your new loan, which I didn't know anything about leasing at the time, but roll into your new loan. And that makes the transaction riskier. Plus credit's bad, so we're gonna give you this score or this uh, this rate. And uh, and you're just creating more of a problem. And it's just it's just you're you're paying, you know, sixty grand for like a twenty thousand dollar car. Um, have you seen anything like that? Have you seen someone pay like three times, four times what, what the car is worth? Uh, is that is that, that yeah, every day? Man. Every day. That's crazy. And then by the time they get to me, sometimes you know they're twenty thousand dollars upside down. Mm. They uh, have absolutely no money to put down, yeah. uh, and everything is just going against them. And uh, we know we do our best, and sometimes you know, that's just it's just too they're too far gone. If you could if you could put like a general rule of thumb of uh, score, and let me start with the score. I know we got to look at the credit character, but let's just say score. If there was like a certain score range. You would say that most applica uh, applications you can you could do something with for, for like a lease. What would you say that that score range? I would say as long as you're a six hundred and above, okay, we will consider you. Okay, for so six hundred above, let's have a discussion. Of course, not I'm sure nothing's guaranteed. Um, you know, we're going to take everyone into into consideration. Yeah. And I'll I'll put this on the record: if you're four hundred or under five fifty, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Get with, get with us, get with, get with, uh, get with our, uh, our team. Yeah, we'll, we'll get you there. there. We'll get to that. And, and, and and then come to me. Yeah, I want to get you there because, I, in my opinion, you know, in my, I've done probably four or five purchase scenarios with, with vehicles, and, and you know, this is my second lease. Um, to me, leasing has always been better. Leasing has always made more sense because my style is I've, I've really never been a long term, uh, with the exception of like my wife's car. But that's because that's the point of our first vehicle we got together when we were married. So, you know, I before I, you know, single guy, I'm a short term thinker, um, but my wife makes me more of a long term thinker. And so, 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 the the car we have right now has been paid off, and you know, now thinking more long term. Um, but again, I'm not really handy with vehicles. Um, I mean, my dad kind of helps me out from time to time, uh, just a way for us to connect and bond in those moments, but I'm always short term. I'm always, uh, you know, I like, and I just like the experience. Um, you know, I, I know that if there's something that was wrong with it, the leadership would, would take care of it. Um, you know, I, I, I like the fact that if I wanted to not have the vehicle at the end of the term, I could, I could walk away and, uh, and, and not worry about it. I like that flexibility, you know, and if I wanted to buy it, I could buy it. Um, so overall, I've always personally liked the leasing experience, and I was upside down before I got into uh, the Cadillac because I got into like an older Audi vehicle that had a lot of problems. So no one wanted to touch it, but they're like, "Oh, we'll take it." Let's hear the value is like X, of course. Uh, so it was really upside down. But uh, you know, I heard about leasing. Leasing is a great way to kind of help eat up some negative equity. Is that? Pretty, pretty true about yeah. the negative equity, at least if, yeah. if you're upside down, maybe at least it's probably a good route for you to yeah. go. If you have uh, negative equity of any kind, of any amount, the best and e I mean, quickest way and easiest way to get rid of it is just in a lease. Mm -hmm. Just because their terms are gonna be much shorter, Yeah. right? You probably have three, four years left to go in the car. You can do a lease for you know two, three years right. and get out of the negative equity situation a lot sooner. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the better both scenarios because the, the worst case scenario is just going to another purchase scenario and you're just growing more negative equity into another depreciating asset on top of a high interest rate it's just making the problems you know and that happens all the time yeah and then what people do to kind of soften the blow yeah. is they extend the term mm. right what's so, the longest term right now? i think that's all 80 months one time 112 months. no way yeah we're at 112 now 112. oh my god i think we'll throw up um that's that's a long term man I, I thought 72 then i heard about 80 i think i saw 84 actually yeah 112 112 wow. wow um so let's say that someone is in a lease right now i know we were in a lease with, with a cadillac is that still someone that, that that you could help yeah absolutely i would evaluate the lease first okay see how the lease was set up originally 
right? See what position you're in, how many months you have left to go, if you're under the miles, if you're over, how much are you going to uh, pay? Uh, you know, if the lease just doesn't make sense to trade out of it now, I won't say, hey, let's just wait, you know, until your lease is up and then you can do this. Otherwise, you're going to have to come out of pocket but, 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 or roll a bunch of negative equity. Right? But if you're in a situation to where you have to get out, family grew, you know, promotion, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, and you have to get out, then we can look at some alternatives for getting you out of that lease. Okay. So I kind of want to kind of want to bring us home here a little bit and do like a quick summary, a quick overview, pros and cons, leasing versus buying, just kind of get your take on that, maybe just, uh, you know, some, you know, you know bullet pointed information mm -hmm. or a summary of pros and cons, you know, just kind of hearing from, from someone like you've been in the business for such a long time. Uh, so we're going to get into that in just one second. But, but first, I do want to thank our partners at GetSecuredCards.com. Um, if you are new to credit or you've wrecked your credit in the past, uh, getting back on track can be rather difficult, especially when, when the credit card companies and the banks, they don't want to take a second chance on you. And I believe I'm a man of second chances. I believe that you know our country is a, is a, is a nation of second chances. Um, and so if you're trying to get back on track with your credit, you know, there's really no better way to do that besides getting yourself like a secure credit card to some other credit builders that are all offered on this website, getsecured.com, getsecuredcards.com, and you can kind of choose from dozens of different secured cards, uh, several different credit builder accounts, revolving accounts. Uh, there's like an online jewelry store on there that'll give you like up to a $5,000 line of credit on their website that reports your credit report. All these payments report to your Credit report, these are great ways to start building new credit, start boosting your scores, and start proving to the banks and to the lenders that you are someone who is financially responsible, makes good money, and pays their bills on time. So to get started, to see what secure credit cards work within your parameters, work within your budget, how you qualify, again, go to getsecuredcards.com. Start rebuilding your credit with the secured card. Uh, there's even some, some unsecured credit cards for students and some, some people that are just new to credit. Those are also on that website. You get to see all the fees, the rates, the, the underwriting criteria, all that is made available. There's no guess and you know which one's going to work for you. Again, go to getsecuredcards.com to explore all the options that are available to you. Start building credit, start getting your credit back on track, start getting your life back together again financially so you can make big purchases like houses and cars and things like that. Okay, so in a nutshell, Umberto, what, what, are, what are pros and cons to leasing or, or, or buying? Just Gives it your, your, your take. Um, if you're a person that doesn't plan on ever owning a title, holding a title in your hand, I've never seen a title in my hand, by the way. Really? Uh, then I would You mean personally? Personally. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I, I see what they look like because yeah. people will trade the cards, <laughs> but I've never seen a title with my name on it. Right. Um, look at a lease of yeah. some kind. Yeah. If you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to keep the car until the wheels fall off in 10 plus years, you should buy it. Awesome. So again, going back to, are you short-term, long-term buyer, that kind of scenario there. And, and tell us a little bit about DNM leasing. Why, why if someone's looking at leasing a vehicle, um, why, why DNM leasing? I get that question asked all the time. Yeah. My, and my answer every single time is, I don't necessarily know if you should do business with DNM. Let me get some information about what you've done in the past, what you see happening moving forward. Mm -hmm. So that we can determine together if doing business with DNM even makes sense, right? So why DNM? I'm not sure if if that's right. Uh, if if I'm not sure if you should, yeah. put it that way. Talk to me first, and I'll give you an unbiased opinion. I love that, and that's that's a that's a great answer. Um, yeah, I, from, from experience, that that was Humberto's approach for me. He doesn't when he gets a you know a new application, takes the DNM. You know, leasing hat off. It's all right. Let me look at this from a pure numbers perspective. Let me see what makes sense for you. What's going to be the best route for you? If it is us, great. If it's not, you know, here's some information for you so you can make uh, your sound decisions. It's a great answer, by the way. Um, so, if someone were to start this process, okay, they are, Roberto. I, you know, want you to take a look at my situation. I'm looking. I'm in the market for for a new vehicle. Um, kind of like in between leasing and buying. I don't really know what I should do. Uh, how does one contact you? What, what's the process to get started? Um, uh, my email, my information, I think is going to be. Um, yeah, we'll put a we'll put a link in, in the link. Yeah, right? you can contact the buyer. Get a maybe get a phone call, kind mm -hmm. of get a little email. Yeah, uh, you can also know. contact the company. You know, uh, DNM uh, Auto Leasing, Houston. Yeah. 
Houston because we have three offices in Dallas and they can help you over there. But if you want some local help here, any information that they need to maybe kind of gather in advance to have their situation best assessed or no, I don't just call, you know, tell me why you think leasing is a good idea or if you want to lease, we'll talk. If it is a good idea, we'll, we'll dive into it. Okay. I will be the first person to, to, to say that leasing is not for everybody. Mm. And if that's the case, I'll tell you up front, I won't waste your time or mine. Awesome. Well, Arbor, again, thanks for, for, for dropping by. Glad to have you come into to the building. Um, really cool that we just met maybe you know, less, than, less than a month ago. And uh, I feel like I've known you for a long time. I, I, I love what you're doing. I love your, your product. I love the, 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 the company and the process. And I think that you, know, you guys are able to do, do a lot of good for, for I know for, for our clientele, for our listeners that are kind of in that mid score range and they're just kind of constantly throwing negative equity on top of purchase loans, on top of purchase loans, 72 month, 84, now 112 month term high interest rates, just kind of delaying the, the, the inevitable. And so I think that they definitely need to get with you and get their situation with that better and get them into a better financial uh, picture. So again, thanks for coming by. Glad to have you. And uh, we'll leave it there. So uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. And thanks for having you on the, on the next one. Take care.